Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. I hope everybody is doing well in this lovely work from home experiment. Um, today I'm going to show you how to use a tool that's on Cooper Lighting's website um, where you can do some quick layouts and uh, be able to find some really basic spacing criteria if you're trying to figure out uh, what to do for spacing down lights or troughers. Um, if you go to Cooper's main webpage, you will see up in the corner there's a section called products. So we're going to click on that. And this is going to bring up all the different families that exist under Cooper. So there's quite a few. Uh, so we're going to go down to Metalux for this example. When we click Metalux, it's going to bring up all the different categories that they have their fixtures placed under. I like to click the LED one uh, pretty much always just because that's what we usually use. Um, and it just brings up all the different LED fixtures that I can reference. So let's look over here. Let's select the Cruise ST. We use this a lot in office spaces and classrooms. And it's going to take you to that product landing page where it gives you a little bit of a summary about the fixture. You can scroll down. Um, it's going to give you an example. And then over here you'll see where all your spec sheets live and your IES files. A little bit different than a lot of websites. This, the way that Cooper does it is you, when you click on this, it's not going to just automatically download an IES file that you'd use with AGI. It's not going to download a folder. It's going to take you to another page. Um, but before I click on that, Usually what I like to do is to click on the spec sheet of the fixture I'm pretty sure I'm going to use. Um, so we'll use the 2x2 two two for this example. We'll open that up in a new tab. So go here, you can see here's the fixture spec sheet, some information about the lensing options, mounting, um, and then here's our ordering grid, which we will be using. So go back to this page. So in your IES files tab, since I've decided I want to use the 2x2 two two recessed fixture, I'm going to go down here and find that in the IS file section. Uh, we're not going to do the 90 CRI, we could, but let's just go into the 80 CRI fixture. And when we click on that, it shows up all of these different options. So we have our different lensing options as how they break this fixture down. If you scroll down, you can see you've got the ribbed, you've got the RDP, which is an inlay, um, and then the smooth. And all of these things are a really big indicator of um, it's going to change the efficacy and the performance and the look of the fixture a little bit. So I would, I just want to use the standard. Um, so if I go back here, I can see that the standard is the ribbed frosted acrylic lens. So now we have that. Let's go back in here. So we don't want the RDP. So we want the rib. So this, this first part number indicates the size. So we know that we're looking at the two by twos. Uh, and then the second set of part numbers indicates the output. Um, so 20 is 2,000 lumens. 20 HE is 2000 lumens high efficiency lens, uh, and then 24 is 2400 lumens, etc. etc. Um, so let's go ahead and try out the 2400 lumen. And I, this part right here is going to tell you, you know, it's ADCRI, all these fixtures are, and then what CCT we're using. So let's go ahead and do the 35 Kelvin. So this little calculator tool, we're going to click on that pops open a window and here we go so this brings up this space you can look at it's super simple 20 feet by 40 feet the fixtures are automatically mounted a foot and a half below the ceiling in a 10 foot ceiling there's a work plane right down here you can see and um, that's where the foot candles are being measured that's a desk height um, all of this can be changed so let's take a look at how we might want to manipulate this a little bit so if we go over here, it's giving us our luminaire information. So here's our part number. If we go into this button right here, this is where we can start to manipulate the space a little bit more. So let's say I'm doing a really big open office um, and I know that I wanna have this be actually 50 feet and I know that I want this part to be 35 feet. Um, so it's gonna automatically adjust that space and adjust your lighting as needed to keep you at the foot candles you want. So one of the other things that I like to change is it's automatically suspending the fixtures. If I know that the top, my grid ceiling is at 10 feet and those fixtures are gonna be recessed into that ceiling, then they don't really need to be suspended. So I usually just zero that out. And then you can see I've moved those fixtures up a little bit higher. And it's also telling you right now an on center spacing. The one thing to note is that it doesn't round to a normal grid spacing, so you'll kind of just have to adjust this uh, in a way that fits with a grid, because um, obviously 6.6 .6 is not going to work. 
so now we've got that fixed. So we can go into reflectance. It auto populates with standard reflectances. This is really kind of the go to white ceiling, white walls, maybe like a gray carpet. Um, if we know that our ceilings are going to be painted a dark color or that the walls and floor are going to be much darker, then we can change this a little bit. Um, there are some resources out there that will guide on what finishes have what reflectances. Sometimes it's just a best guess and sometimes you can just ask us and we can let you know um, what has worked well in the past. Um, so after you've done changing that, uh, you can go here. Um, this one we change the most often um, depending on the type of space that you're using. So the IES recommendation is 30 foot candles for a work plane height. Um, I like to lean a little brighter when I'm doing this layout just from experience and you never know what those end finishes are going to be. But a lot of times I will change this just to 35. Uh, it gives us a little bit more forgiving spacing. Uh, the other thing that you can change is if you absolutely do not want to use this many light fixtures, you can change your maximum number. Um, usually that sort of defeats the purpose of designing two foot candles, but every situation is different. And then if we go into our settings tab, it gives you some other options to change your, your units of measurement that you're using. So let's say you're doing a project for somebody in another country where they want to use a different metric, you can change that. Pretty uncommon, but the tool is there to use it. So this is going to give us a little, a really simple layout. So now I know, okay, I'm getting an average of 36 foot candles at the work plane height with this layout. Um, and let's say that you like that, it looks good, you want to send it off to somebody. Um, you have two options. So you can go up to the share button and with that we can email it directly to somebody. So you can email it to me to get pricing uh, or to verify it for you, or you can email it to somebody else that you want to take a look at uh, the layout and see what they think. Um, that's one way you can do it. The other option is you can just go in and print and you can add in all your details. You can directly print it, obviously, or you could go in and just print a PDF um, and save a file to be able to share with somebody. And you can actually manipulate these little viewports. They're easier to see. Um, in a small space like this, maybe not as important if you were doing a really large warehouse space um, and utilizing some of the industrial fixtures, you might want to be able to manipulate that view a little bit more to make it easier to, to look at. So that's option one. The second thing that you can do if you're not totally sure what fixture that you need to use, maybe you're trying to decide between um, a couple different outputs uh, and a couple different uh, lenses. So we can close out of this. We go back to our IES file summaries here. Let's open this up. And instead of clicking the calculator button, you can start to click on the checkbox right next to it. So I'm going to try this with the perf inlay, but I want to compare it to a standard fixture and I also want to compare it to a smooth fixture at a higher output and just see what I can get out of this. Let's make sure we're in 35. So then we scroll all the way down to the bottom and then we click calculate the selected file. So this is going to take all three of those. and put them into one. So now this little drop down menu has multiple different fixtures that you can pick from in here. Uh, and this is just makes it a little easier so you don't have to start fresh recreating the size of your space or your reflectances. You can just change out different fixtures and see how it changes the layout. So we're going to click on a different one. So you can see it adjusted the layout just a little bit. And then this last one, it really adjusted it. So we can see by moving to that smooth, uh, smooth inlay and then also bumping up our output, we're really able to reduce the amount of fixtures that we need to achieve our same goals uh, for output. So that is how you do a quick layout um, in the Cooper website. This works for all of their fixtures. Um, you can do this with downlights. You can do this with their linear product. You can do it with their... McGraw Edison series, so outdoor parking lots or parking garages. Um, this is a great tool for that for just standard spacing criteria. The other thing that I really like about this tool is it's so much easier to set up than AGI 32 if you just need to know like how far apart should I place these roughly to make sure that I'm getting enough light. Um, it's really to share as you can see so you 
could send this off to somebody really quick and then if everything looks good then maybe at that point you can plug it into AGI 32 or start looking at some other complexities in the space. Um, the uh, Some of the things that are harder with this type of product is that you can only test one fixture, only test one fixture, you can't mix fixtures in here and do downlights and do a linear over here. It's one fixture at a time um, and I can't mix sizes. So I can't look at what do a couple two by twos and then some two by fours look like. It's, it's very one dimensional. It's meant to be a quick reference um, and to get you started, give you a baseline to work from. Um, the other thing that's kind of challenging with this is the spaces are only square or rectangular. You can't sort of add in different arms or see how a space adjacent to this main area would affect that light level. Um, again, it's, it's very much designed to just be a quick reference. Um, and it's grid based, so I can't pick one of these fixtures and manipulate that. Like, let's say I know that there's some sort of issue over here where there's some HVAC in the way or something is going on, it, I can't adjust this model for that. All of those drawbacks to this are usually a great time to email me uh, and we can do a more complex layout for you and, and start taking a look at how lights and other spaces and other layers of light manipulate the light levels. Um, or if you really need to know vertical flow candles, that is where you know, reaching out and to your resources and having us build you a model um, could be really helpful. So with that, thank you so much for watching and we will hopefully be seeing you in person very soon. Thanks. Bye.